Turn left, then turn left. Turn left, then take the second left. What a lovely day for turn garden left. lighting. Turn so right. Bloody... Then, at the end of the road, turn left. Wiggly. <laughs> turn left. Then, cross the roundabout. Cross the roundabout. First exit. Then, take the second left. I'm going around in circles here. Greetings, David at DCES UK, and as you can see by the tea cosy, winter is once more upon us. November, ugh. Not only that, a sober November, hence the increased cigar smoking. You've got to die or something, and in the King's speech they said they were going to uh, outlaw cigarettes or smoking by uh, increasing it, increasing the, the age where you could buy cigarettes by a year, uh, year on year. So eventually... The, the youth of tomorrow won't be able to, to smoke anymore. And not only that, they'll get on to drinking next after that, I'm sure. So uh, the youth of tomorrow will live forever. Unlike me. Right, okay. Garden lighting. I was talking to Nick Bundy recently, uh, earlier this week. And we were both saying it's very hard to make videos these days because we've, we've kind of done everything or everyone's done everything now. What, what can you make a video on now? All the, the popular channels are doing the stuff like uh, solar and battery. Uh, renewable stuff, smart tech, all that kind of crap that I can't be asked with. I don't think Nick can be asked much with it either. So, yeah, it's kind of hard to make new content on something that hasn't already been done a thousand times before. But here we are, and here we go. Uh, and I'm going to be doing one on self garden lighting, which I've done before. A little bit of a twist out to this one. Nothing particularly interesting. I'm on my own. It's a Friday. Let's have a look at where we are, shall we? I'm thinking of lighting up my bush, or my bushes. So I'm looking at some, well, like I say, salve lights. I'll get them off in a minute. I'm still unloading the van at the moment. I've got an outbuilding here. Seventeenth edition Wilex board. Super, super. And at the moment, it's coming out to this horror, which staples rather clumsily along up to here. What I plan to do is to install a mini enclosure just here which will contain a photo cell and a timer to drive these lights. So what the outgoing cable from this is all going to be 12 volt, which is nice because I don't like dragging 230 volts along flower beds. I seem to be getting aged in my old age. More specifically, I purchased one of these from uh, TLC Direct after I saw old Dick Bundy playing with them. Marvellous bit of kit for your cable spooling. But also, I've got myself a workbench. How's about that then? I'm getting too old to uh, keep bending down to pick things up, so I thought I'd get myself a table and I can actually, uh, well, stick my tools on it and not bend down so much anymore. Sad, isn't it? 
I invested in that for about 80 quid and then the wife pointed out that my late father's Black & Decker workmate was sitting in the shed gathering cobwebs. Never mind. 12 volt MR16. I'm going to stick in one of these soaps and lamps. I've been using these for years now. I remember in my previous video where I showed these, someone chimed up in the comments going, Oh, you can't use them, they're for indoor use only. Well, no, they're for use in an enclosure. It just means don't expose them to the elements. Inside an enclosure, you're fine, mate. Anyway, I'll put a two-year warranty on anything, so if anything fails, then the customer can complain at me, can't they? Not that I've experienced many failures. It's quite a good lamp. Right, here's another one of my new aids. I saw Dan Sparky in training using one. Little electric screwdriver. Absolutely no balls, no torque to it, but useful for unzipping or zipping up your accessories and very low profile. I chose today for this work because it was supposed to be a bit sunny, but I'm not sure the rain's going to hold off. 230 volts line to neutral. 30 volts line to earth. At least we've got a supply out here. That's something to work off, isn't it? Let's go and isolate that. And well, oh Jesus. Some DIY tomfoolery going on around here. The situation is that the, the homeowners recently bought this place, so this isn't their work. This is legacy stuff from whoever lived here previously. And yeah, it's all a bit gash, isn't it? All right, back in the source of the installation, he's just pointed this out to me. Can we get rid of this? He says, oh yeah, that can go. <laughs> okay, well, I'll find that on the inside and uh, get shot of that, I think. Need to find what supply that's on. Pond supply is probably that horror out there, so we'll have that off and check it out later. And then we've got two lighting circuits. Let's go with that one. You know it's going to be the other one. Always the way. Got the wrong one, of course. I'm sure we work in Fridays. Never could get the hang of Fridays. Things always go wrong on a Friday. So it's probably that one. Obviously, I will check properly with a GS38 tester that I am safely isolated. But for now, a quick voltage indication. Yeah, that's probably it. Let's get the, uh, the TIS out on it and confirm for sure. Yeah, I've lost my GS38 and don't tell anybody. That's dead. I'll get rid of this twin and earth. I'm going to... I'll probably get rid of this whisker box actually because I could just put my my new enclosure on there. It is a whisker enclosure. It's a little din rail enclosure. IP rated. Of course the IP rating goes out the window once some idiot starts knocking holes in it. But I'm not putting any switch gear into this and I know there's been a lot of whining on social media about consuming units outdoors. I've got no problem with consuming units outdoors so long as the manufacturer says they're okay for the job and so long as you're not banging holes in the top of the fecking thing. Keep your cable entries on the bottom and you're probably okay. But this is going to house... What is this going to house? It's going to house the timer and the photo cell, which is why I've gone for something with a clear cover. So I plan to put them forward facing there so that the timer is adjustable if the customer wants to adjust it. There we go, that's the timer, little DIN rail timer. And the photo cell, of course, can pick up the, the light conditions. And the idea of this installation is that uh, as dusk falls, the photo cell turns on the lights. Oh, an LED driver is going to live in there as well. It's going to send that 12 watt lighter signal out to the flower beds to turn on a bunch of spike lights that are along the length of the flower beds, five spike lights in total. And then at a predetermined time, say, I don't know, 11 pm, something like that, the timer will cut the power and the lights will extinguish. So it's fully automated. No one has to think about it. It's not on a movement sensor. It's not on a manual switch. They turn on when it gets to dusk. They turn off at a suitable time of night. Obviously, you've got your daylight saving times, your British summer time, which will knock the timer out by an hour. Doesn't really matter, does it? Or well, the user can adjust that if they want to. It's accessible to them. It should be a nice little installation. Not a bad day if the rain holds off. 
20 past 10. I really need a piss because I've had two coffees and a cup of tea already. I'm going to do that. I won't film that. Sorry, ladies. But I'll do that. And then I think it's time to get that whisker box off the wall, get my enclosure onto the wall, and uh, start doing some wiring. Should be quite a quick job. I've allowed the day for it. I don't think I need the day for it. But, you know, in, in this new semi-retirement of mine, I can be as lazy as I fucking want to be. And I like being lazy. Look, the bloody sun's come out. And blue sky. It ain't gonna last. But I'll take it while I can get it. Box on wall, entry point in, drain hole drilled. Bit of OB1 around the cable entry there. Just to try and keep the creepy crawlers out more than anything else. It's got the uh, it's got a hole drilled in for drainage and to, to keep the the moisture out. The trouble with these sort of boxes or any sort of enclosure really is that uh, there's no such thing as a perfect seal. Even if you are sealing it really well, then you are still trapping moisture inside the moisture of the day, the moisture that's in the air, even on a hot day. And that's going to condensate when things cool down. So always good to have a drain hole to equalise the moisture and the pressure inside. Anyway, that's on the wall. I'll tell you what, I don't know how I managed for so long without a fucking workbench, because this thing's an absolute bloody godsend. 80 quid from tool station or something. A couple of people said to me that you've got to watch this particular model because a pin happens to start dropping out after a while, which causes one of the legs to go funny, but uh, I've only had it a couple of weeks, I haven't experienced that yet. But just having a bench where one can work away on one's tools without having to constantly bend down is, frankly, Amaze balls, and I can't believe I've been in the game for over 10 years without figuring that out for my own by now. What an asshole. So, yeah, there's me OB1. I believe that other brands exist and are punted by uh, certain YouTubers who are paid to say that it's great. I've no experience of other brands, so I don't know. I'll tell you what, this November sun is glorious. Sadly, I'm not working in it because I'm in a shaded area, but uh, let's see where we are, shall we? Bit of a cock up. As in, this LED driver that I've got hiding in here is bloody massive. It's a 30 watt, and he needed a 20, but I seem to be out of 20 watt drivers. Nonetheless, it all just about fits. I've got my photo cell there. That's going to stick through a blank plate. Oh, my, I've drilled that hole too big. Did I drill a 20 mil? That's supposed to be a 16. Fucking hell. I've got the wrong hole saw off. Anyway, I'll have to get another blank and drill a 16mm hole for that to fit through. And then the, that'll sit there, the cover will go on. I'll show you a wiring diagram on the screen now as to how it's going to work. The timer is going to turn on about 3pm because in the depths of winter it starts getting dark somewhere between 3 and 4. That'll tell, the photocell will tell the lights to turn on in that window after 3pm when dusk falls. It might not turn on until as late as 10 o'clock at night in the height of summer. In the depths of winter, which we're turning on about four o'clock or so in the afternoon, and then it'll remain on until the timer pulls the power, and then that'll be that until the following day. What can go wrong other than some dickhead drilling the wrong size fucking hole in the thing? I better go find my 16 mil hole saw so I can get this together. Not horrendously shabby, I might put a label over that bit of crappy stuff out. One thing I'm not impressed about with this fucking box whisker is this fucking clear film you put on which is a bastard to get off and which leaves a sticky residue all over it. If the whole point of that film is to give you something that keeps your fucking the front of your enclosure nice and clean it ain't doing a great job mate. It might stop it from getting scratched but it comes off in bits and leaves a fucking sticky mess all over it. Manufacturers, I tell you, they really ought to try and store in some of their own products every now and again just to see, you know, what works and what doesn't. I have to get some wipes on that now, but the idea, as you can see, is that you've got a, a clear enclosure there that the sensor can see through. Sure, it's a little bit, a uh, little bit smoked in its appearance, but nonetheless, it should be, shouldn't be a problem. Enough light will be hitting the sensor in the daytime. And then you've got the access to the timer, which is adjustable. I've set the clock on it. You probably won't be able to see that. Uh, obviously, the power is still off at the moment. 
what I need to do now, now that all that's in, it's just a case of clip this cable up and start terminating it onto some spike lights. Where are we? 10 to 12, still in the AM. Not bad. I've got a horrible feeling I might not have clips for this cable. This is a HO7 cable, 1.5 mil, two core. Obviously no CPC needed. So I've ordered in like 25 meters of it especially. I won't need anywhere near that much, but good to have. I'm just going to clip that along the top of the wall. If I've got clips, if I haven't, then I'd better go off and get some. And then it's uh, it's spike light o'clock. This wall's pretty crappy for knocking clips into. It's pretty ancient and uh, you can see it wobble when hammered. So I'm going to give it some aid using dowels, wooden dowels. Little tippet for you here. If you take a wooden dowel, chop it in half. I'll stick a link to like tool station on the screen or somewhere where you can buy these from. That gives you two halves of a dowel. I then drill a 5.5 mil hole. Yeah, it's a really crumbly stuff. I can then hammer in my dowel. Directly into the brick rather than the crumbly mortar. And then whack my clip so that the nail goes into the wood of the dowel. And hey presto. I'm sure there'll be lots of people going, oh David you can't use dowels, they're just going to rot or whatever. That's the thing with garden electrics, everyone's a fucking expert and everyone hates whatever you do. There'll be lots of people going, oh I don't know what you've done there David. Yeah, fuck off, I don't care. I don't care if you like it or not, it's what I've agreed with the homeowner and it works. You know what, I've been sticking dowels into walls for years where I can't get clips directly into them. You know how many collapsing cables I've had to go back to? Fucking none. So, shut your fucking face, you armchair bastards. Brr. Ooh, these things always take longer than you think, don't they? It's 20 past two now, and you really notice the, the quality of light drop at this time of year when you get past two o'clock. Rain's still holding off, thankfully. It's a good job this is a price job, isn't it? Because it's, it's taking... Well, I, I thought I might have this done in half a day, but it just keeps on going. Not that I'm that fussed. I'm taking it nice and slow. I've still got two more lights to connect up. I'm going to thread my cable through the bushes using rods rummaging around in there like some kind of David Bellamy and well here's one of my spikes gone in here and I'm using these three-way IP68 junctions they are Knightsbridge things and they've got different uh, glands would you call them and different stuffers inside depending on your thickness of cable because obviously as you can see my distribution cable is a 1.5 mil the cable going off to each individual light is just a 0.75 mil. I'm using a 1.5 mil just to combat the voltage drop a little bit. Should be alright for the amount of meters I've got going on here. Here's something I can't remember if I've shown before or not. I've got no idea if this camera is actually looking at what I'm... There's no viewfinder or anything on this fucking thing. I've got one of these. If, you, if you're too tight to buy a Nipex Ergo strip, then it, this thing costs about, it's about 16 quid or something off Amazon. And it does the same sort of thing. It's not quite as good as an ergo strip because it doesn't have the blade for slicing down the cable. But uh, yeah, that's all right, isn't it? For a, a few quid it. And I'm just connecting up my two poles using the line and neutral terminals, although of course it's just 12 volts. And these lamps are completely polarity agnostic. Doesn't matter which way around you connect them. But I'm using blue to neutral and brown to live. Blue's negative, brown's positive. I suppose I should be using official DC colours really, but no one cares. So I've just got one more of these to connect up, I believe, over there. And by the time I get this finished, <laughs> it might actually be dark enough to see the a proper effect because it's clouded over it's 20 past two we'll, we'll see how things go as i say i'm not in any huge rush this is my only task today i had a couple of other things lined up in case i did finish early but no point busting a gut is there 
Speaking of points I've made before, I failed to understand why so many spike light manufacturers still make them as 230 volts when 12 volts is enough for anybody. You get people who uh, will string a armoured cable 230 volts around the flower beds, terminate them into shoddy looking whisker boxes or whatever, I'm trying to keep the moisture out. And then from the armoured position, they've gone all the, to the effort of running it to an armoured position. And the fucking spike light comes off in a flex. That was the fucking spike light comes off in a flex. You know, that flex then winds its way around the, the flower bed or whatever, waiting for someone to stick a trowel through or their snips or for water to get into the light and for it to, to trip something. You can get as many lumens out of a 12 volt MR16 lamp as you can a 230 volt LED lamp. I mean, it's the same technology, it's just one's got a means of dropping the 230 volts down to a, a lower voltage. So, yeah. I don't understand why there aren't more of these sort of things on the market. And I, I buy these cans because they're about the only thing you can get in a MR16 form factor. I get them off Amazon. I'll stick a link in the description of as I already said. You know, this is all 12 volts. I've got an IP68 connector here. There's no awkward armour terminations going on. This stuff can just sit on the flower beds. I will tidy it up a little bit and lose it, but it can it can just be lost under the leaf litter or whatever because it's never going to cause any harm, any damage. It's perfectly safe and it's very effective. So come on lighting manufacturers, the likes of Saxby or whomever, get your acts together and start giving us more choice when it comes to 12 volt cans with MR16 fittings. 20 past three, what a day. Who would have thought that would take all day? I must be getting slow in my old age. The nice thing with these is, yeah, and then I'm going to throw out huge amounts of light, but you can either use them to light up the greenery or you can angle them down onto the ground. We'll see what the homeowner wants to do soon. I've got a horrible feeling he's going to go, oh, I was expecting a bit more light than that. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a, a nice, subtle feature planting solution of sorts. Some lovely autumnal colours up there. Look at those trees. I think I have to get the homeowner out to take a look. I think uh, I'm happy he's not going to be disappointed. I, I may have underestimated the density of the vegetation here. My idea was that the, these things would light up the vegetation somewhat and spill over some light onto the driveway, but I fear that the vegetation is a little too thick. And what may end up happening is that the lights may end up actually being turned and pointed onto the pathway to illuminate that more than the greenery. Well, you've got to go with what works, I suppose. That's not the only illumination to be going in here. We're talking about doing something up there. We've got a couple of compact fluorescent lights. There's one burning rather poorly above the doorway there, which, you know, we might upgrade them to something. I think I'll force these things on so we can have a look at them and then I'll get the homeowner out. And then put off for a Friday night of no booze. Doesn't sound like much fun. Roll on December, I say. The sun is just setting over there. It's on at the moment because I've overridden the time and I've stuck a rubber blind grommet over the sensor to fool it into thinking that it's night time. With that light sensor, the way it works as well is um, if you cover it over, then it doesn't immediately come on. Similarly, if you expose it to light, it doesn't immediately go off. It waits to make sure that, you know, it's not some passing car or that it's not some temporary obstruction that's either causing it to extinguish the lights or to fire them up. So it waits for a good sort of half a minute or so before deciding, you know, this is the light level I need to activate at. Getting out toward the, the pathway door. I'm, that one I might sort of leave highlighting that brickwork. That's quite nice, isn't it? I mean, it's hard to tell until it's really dark as to how much spillover light you're going to get, but 
Even if they just use this marker lights, I don't think that's a bad solution. Well, I'll see if he's disappointed and let you know. Well, the good news is the client was very happy. Very pretty lights. And uh, it's unfortunate because uh, it's now 1628. The dusk sensor came on at 1625, but I had to leave immediately because I was blocking the driveway and they wanted to go out. So I wasn't able to sort of really show them off, which is what I've been sort of hanging around for, for ages. So, bit of a shame. Probably a shit end to this video. But then it was probably a shit video in the first place, what can I tell you? I said at the beginning, you know, there's not a lot you can film anymore. It's all, all very boring, nothing's very exciting. I haven't even got anyone I can riff off. I haven't got Nigel here anymore. I can fart in front of them, call a wanker. So, you know, it is what it is. Time now, I suppose, to chuck out a few coffee shouts. Coffee shouts in the great outdoors, in the wonderful winter sunshine. <laughs> Fucking pigeons nesting under my solar panels. So you can't be the great outdoors. A few quick coffee mentions to rattle through, starting with a whore, Marky D. Just brilliant vids keep on coming, says Marky D. Uh, thanks for tuning in as always, Marky D. A virgin. Stevie C and the place to be. Now I've seen you pop up in the comments many a time Stevie C so uh, nice to see you actually on this platform. Love your videos, informative and entertaining simultaneously. I fear this one probably wasn't. What can you do? Uh, whore Andy Payne. Good old Andy Payne. Uh, as NASA called I'm sure they can do with some additional help on their space movies. Yes that's referring to that oddball video of our spaceship blowing up which uh, I wasn't going to release publicly but then I got drunk and clicked the wrong button. So that, that explains that. Oh, Matthew Bruff bought five beers. I, I wasn't meant to be an, anon an anonymous coward. I'm sorry, Matthew. We, we weren't sure if you were an anonymous coward or not on the last video. Uh, and obviously you weren't supposed to be. I didn't think that was the case. As I say, that buy me a coffee platform sometimes cocks up. Uh, uh, you, Matthew was about to fill his house with Hager AFDDs and has decided perhaps not to. Interesting. Okay. Uh, more to come, I'm afraid, on the Hager AFDD front. Sorry, Hager. And Anonymous Coward. Uh, great to see a local on the tubes with great videos. Ooh, I wonder where you are, Anonymous Coward, and, and who you are. I feel, feel I've got someone spying on me here. Uh, a whore, Adam Stewart from White Star Sparks. Nice to see you here again, Adam. As always, great content, Dave. Again, this one perhaps not. Another whore, David Patterson. Uh, excellent, excellent video, David and Linda. Keep up the good work. Cheers from across the Irish Sea. Well, uh, have a Guinness for me, Mr. Patterson. Nice to see you back here again. And also another whore in the name of Ollie. Nice to see you back, Ollie. Loving your work, David. Your videos are as entertaining and enjoyable as interesting as they come. The five is in the post. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, keep up the great work, me old China. Well, one shall certainly try. I'm not convinced there's a pigeon up there who's got his eye on me, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of it. Hmm. I must find a way to get them out of from under my panels. Uh, it, I'll appreciate any comments on that, on shifting pigeons from under solar panels. A virgin, no less. Casey McMahon Cox. Informative and entertaining content as always, David. Uh, have a cold one from Australia. Well, thank you for uh, sending me a beer from the other side of the world there, Casey. Nice to have you tuning in. Hawes, Vivian and Martin on Rosé, uh, Shaft Lube Specialists, they're going by this time. Add anything you like, so long as you can get Linda to say, fuck Christmas. Well, I'll try. Fuck Christmas. Uh, another whore, Chris Danseff, my man on the motorbike. Uh, thank you very much for letting me know about the Garrow unit. It sounds like uh, Chris is going to be putting in some load shedding. Uh, there is a video and articles on the website about the Garrow device I use. I'm not sure about this. He's, he's still looking at me. Super wanks, just four to go through. Virgin, Andrew Stone 841, who is an orange super wanker. 
uh, Michael Bellis 2279, who is a promotion to whore uh, and is a shocking pink super wanker. I think that's the first shocking pink I've ever had. Uh, another whore, Gimp079, nice to see you back here again. Keep them coming, you big gay, says that blue super wanker. And a virgin, Almac56. Special mentions go to Loz, who I bumped into in CEF. It was nice to bump into you, Loz. I hope your school caretaking is going okay. You know what, I'm gonna, gonna shift position. So I really don't, don't trust that, that fucker. Uh, so, but that's it for this video. You've gotta be fucking kidding me. Son of a bitch!